Hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about the physical properties of alcohols and phenols. Now, have you ever wondered why alcohols and phenols, both of which have this OH group, have different physical properties? Like they have different boiling points and they dissolve differently in water? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. We're going to dive deep into the physical properties of these alcohols and phenols, more specifically their boiling point and solubility. We'll see how the presence of this OH group plays out differently in both these cases. Okay, so let's start with boiling point. What do we know about boiling point? Simple, right? It is the temperature at which a liquid turns into a gas or more specifically when its vapor pressure becomes equal to the external atmospheric pressure. Now you see both alcohols and phenols have OH group which means they both can form hydrogen bonding with each other. So what basically happens here is that the hydrogen atom bonded to a highly electronegative atom like oxygen atom here is attracted to the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom of the adjacent or the neighboring molecule. Now why does this matter? What's the big deal about hydrogen bonding? Well, you can see that this hydrogen bonding creates a kind of a strong sticky force between these molecules, right? You can see that these molecules are now kind of stuck together. They are much more closer together. And as a result of this, when you try to boil the liquid, you need more energy to overcome these hydrogen bonds. And that raises the boiling points of alcohols and phenols significantly. And this is why their boiling points are generally higher than other organic compounds like say hydrocarbons, ethers or haloalkanes of similar molecular mass. For example, let's compare an alcohol with an ether. Let's take a simple one. Uh, ethanol which is a very simple alcohol and the simplest ether dimethyl ether. Now both of them have similar molar mass around 46 grams per mole. But you will see that ethanol boils at a much higher temperature. Ethanol boils at around 78 degrees Celsius, whereas dimethyl ether boils at minus 24 degrees Celsius. Well, this can be attributed to the weak attractive forces present in dimethyl ether. To be more specific, these ether molecules are held together by weak van der Waal forces whereas the ethanol molecules are held together by strong hydrogen bonding. And this is why as we just stated before alcohols and phenols or those molecules that can form hydrogen bonds will have a higher boiling point as opposed to molecules that cannot form hydrogen bond here. Dimethyl ether does not have a hydrogen atom attached to its oxygen and is completely incapable of forming any hydrogen bonds with other dimethyl ether molecules. So this was about comparing alcohols and phenols with other class of compounds, right? But you know what, there's a small twist. Even among alcohols, the boiling points can vary substantially. For example, let's compare these two alcohols. Here we are comparing a straight chain alcohol with a branch chain alcohol. And in the second case, we are comparing two different alcohols of very different molecular mass. Now the common thing is, of course, they're all alcohols. They all have the same OH group, but you know what? Their boiling points can differ substantially again. So now it's time to explore what's actually happening here and how do we figure out which among these molecules would have a higher boiling point. Okay, first up, it is a molecular mass or the number of carbon atoms in an alcohol. As the number of carbon atom in an alcohol increases, the boiling point also increases. And this is because as the molecular mass increases, the molecule becomes more polarizable due to its larger electron cloud. So what do we mean by that? Okay, so let's go back to the basics. Okay, let's think of electrons as this diffuse cloud or a smear of negative charge occupying a certain space around the atomic nucleus. Okay, now a larger or a more spread out electron cloud means the electrons on an average are further away from the positively charged nucleus or the nuclear attraction. This means these electrons are loosely bound to the parent nuclei and can be more easily distorted by let's say an external electric field or even by the electric fields of neighboring molecules. Now because these electrons are constantly in motion even within an alcohol molecule, there would be these momentary times where there could be an imbalance in the electron distribution like you can see here an unequal distribution of electron that gives rise to a temporary dipole. 
so what do we mean by temporary dipoles here basically a temporary separation of charge right and this instantaneous dipole can influence the electron cloud of a neighboring molecule an alcohol molecule and cause it to develop a dipole as well basically it's inducing dipole here right and when these two temporary induced dipoles interact with each other that is the partial positive end of one dipole aligns with the partial negative end of the other a weak fleeting attractive force arises between them which we call van der waal forces but wait more specifically it is called london dispersion forces but for now let's refer to it as van der waal forces okay now coming back a larger alcohol molecule with more electrons would mean more opportunities for these instantaneous dipoles to form and that means there is more attractive forces contributing to stronger van der waal forces overall and as a result we need more energy to overcome these attractive forces resulting in higher boiling point higher boiling point in larger alcohols right now if you have any doubts on how these temporary dipoles form and affect the strength of the van der waal forces i would highly recommend you folks to please go back and look up the chapter or the topic on van der waal forces all right so that was about the effect of molecular mass on boiling point now there's one more crucial factor which is branching the more branched an alcohol gets lower would be the boiling point now why is that well it all boils down to surface area you see as molecules branch they become more spherical or more compact and this reduces the surface area available for these neighboring molecules to interact with each other and as a result it diminishes or decreases the strength of the van der waal forces so even though as you can see in this case the molecular mass stays the same the interaction forces would weaken because there is less effective molecular contact you see a larger surface area allows for more points of contact right i mean there is more interaction between the electron clouds of neighboring molecules and that contributes to the overall strength of the van der waal forces but when branching increases this effective molecular contact or the area for molecular contact decreases and that has an adverse effect on the strength of our attractive forces so you can see that as the surface area decreases the strength of the van der waal forces also decreases and that lowers the boiling point so we looked at the two important factors that affect boiling point of alcohols one was molecular mass and second one was branching let's apply these to our cases that we discussed before so we talked about two different cases here right so let's look at the first case we have a straight chain alcohol and a branched chain alcohol and both of them have same molecular mass you can see 1 2 3 4 carbon atoms here 1 2 3 4 carbon atoms here okay so the molecular mass is same now which among these two would have a higher boiling point this one right because this alcohol has a greater surface area as compared to this branched alcohol and greater the surface area stronger is the van der waal force of interaction and that contributes to higher boiling point and which among these two alcohols would have higher boiling point you can see that there's no question of branching here but look at the number of carbon atoms here you have 1 2 3 4 carbon atoms and here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 carbon atoms this alcohol is a much heavier alcohol it has a much greater molecular mass so pretty straight forward greater the molecular mass more polarizable the molecule becomes due to its large electron cloud right and that contributes to greater van der waal force of attraction which in turn increases the boiling point now let's take this entire discussion one step further okay what if you want to compare an alcohol with a phenol how do you compare the boiling points of alcohol versus phenol let's say you're comparing a phenol with an alcohol of similar molecular mass which among the two would have higher boiling point can you guess which one that would be well it is phenol phenol actually has higher boiling point than an alcohol of comparable molecular mass for instance let's compare phenol with some alcohols okay those that have a comparable molar mass now what do you think the boiling points of these alcohols would be as compared to phenol boiling point of phenol is 181 degree celsius okay now an alcohol of comparable molar mass would have a boiling point of 138 degree celsius all right now some of you might counter me saying that ma'am but this alcohol actually has a lower mass right it is 88 grams per mole but phenol has 94 grams per mole all right then let's compare it with hexanol which actually has greater mass 
but in this case again you will see that the boiling point of hexanol is actually lesser than the boiling point of phenol so this means there is more to phenol than just hydrogen bonding something unique that the large flat aromatic ring brings to this scenario and that is the pi pi interaction the pi pi interaction is a strong attractive interaction where the electron clouds of the rings essentially stack up against each other now the closest thing i could think of was let's say we have like a pancake a dosa or let's say chila you know that we have for a breakfast imagine this flat pancake like dosa like benzene rings aligning themselves on top of each other forming different layers the delocalized electron clouds in these rings are attracted to each other and this creates a powerful stacking effect and this additional interaction makes the phenol molecules stick together with each other so this extra stickiness is what contributes to greater van der waal forces and stronger the van der waal forces which means we need more energy to break apart these phenol molecules in other words we end up getting higher boiling points all right so that was about the boiling point of phenol and now it's time to quickly look at the solubility now we all know water loves to make hydrogen bonds right so if your molecule has a good oh group and a small enough non polar region then what is going to be pretty happy is going to welcome the alcohol molecule with both its hands so what i mean by saying this is that in alcohols basically short chain alcohols like methanol and ethanol would dissolve easily in water because they can form hydrogen bonds perfectly with water but as the alkyl chain gets longer the molecule would become more and more hydrophobic and the water would say no thank you you're not welcome here in other words alcohols with a larger alkyl chain would find it pretty difficult to dissolve in water and what about phenols well phenol is again interesting because it does have the oh group which means it can form hydrogen bonds with water molecules but 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 what about the benzene ring here it is bulky and non polar it is hydrophobic and this makes the overall phenol molecule much less water friendly as compared to like say small alcohols like ethanol so easy to say that phenol is less soluble than small alcohols like methanol and ethanol but that's just half the story if you're comparing phenol with longer chain alcohols like say butanol or pentanol or hexanol phenol would be much more soluble than these higher alcohols and this is again because increasing the length of the carbon chain in alcohols would make the non polar part much more dominant and this would make the molecule progressively hydrophobic so remember folks the rule of thumb is larger or bigger the hydrophobic region less soluble the molecule would be in water even if it has the ability to form hydrogen bonding all right that's it for the video let's take a quick recap what did we learn we learned that alcohols and phenols have higher boiling point than other organic compounds like hydrocarbons haloalkanes or ethers of similar molecular mass and we also saw what factors would affect the boiling point of different alcohols which is molecular mass and branching we also saw that phenol has a higher boiling point than alcohols of similar molecular mass and this could be attributed to its pi pi interaction and lastly we also looked at the solubility of alcohols and phenols in water we saw that solubility in water essentially depends on the overall hydrophobic character of the entire molecule although phenols are less soluble than smaller alcohols like methanol and ethanol it does have greater solubility as compared to longer chain alcohols especially alcohols with more than 3 carbon atoms